Well, howdy folks, it's Matthew, your friendly neighborhood technician here. I'm making a video for you out of Boise, Idaho. And today I'm doing a diagnosis on a 2002 Ford Explorer. It's a, uh, you know, typical Ford Explorer, four-door, all-wheel drive. Or I'm sorry, not all-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, XLT, automatic transmission. And it came in with a check engine light on, and it was also in limp mode. So what I did is I woke up early this morning and the first thing I did was I started it cold to see how the engine would run, start right up cold, all that other good stuff. It ran just fine. Engine started right up. It ran just fine. So then the next step that I did was I went to put it in gear. When I put it in drive, I didn't go anywhere. So then I put it in reverse. I still didn't go anywhere. So then I tried it in first gear, second gear, third gear, still didn't go anywhere. So then I let it sit for a little bit and I let it warm up. And after I let it warm up, I put it in drive and I was finally able to go. But I kind of realized that we're actually not in limp mode. Catastrophic failure had already happened. And that's why the vehicle won't go any faster than 10, 20, 30 miles an hour. So I got it pulled in, uh, hooked up the computer to it. I suspected to find some transmission codes, which is exactly what I found. So at that point, I went ahead and decided to put the vehicle up in the air and drain a little bit of the transmission fluid and check that. So that's what I did also. So now at that point, let's go to the workbench and see what we're working with. Okay, so now that I know what the physical symptoms are, doesn't want to shift into gear, doesn't want to go at all high RPM, stuff like that. Um, next thing that I did was run the OBD2 codes and Two of the codes that I ran that, that I came back with is the first one was a P0745 pressure control solenoid A. Now what a pressure control solenoid is, is it's a device inside of the transmission. Normally there's three of them, A, B, and C. And as you read it here, pressure control solenoid, that's exactly what that solenoid does, is it controls the, uh, the amount of transmission pressure, uh, transmission fluid pressure, inside of the transmission which is obviously what helps it shift gear and all that other stuff normally you can find a pressure control solenoid if you remove the transmission pan and you look at the valve body they're a little electronically controlled looking cylinder and you can replace them one at a time as they go out here's the catch to this to this code though p0745 is a very generic code for a pressure control solenoid ford has specific pressure control solenoid a b and c codes that will let you know exactly how this is failing but if you get a p0745 sorry about that almost lost the camera uh this is very generic just tells you that hey the computer's detected that this sucker has failed it doesn't know what's going on so let's go ahead and see what other codes we might have so the next code that we came up with was a P1700. Transmission intermediate failure failed to neutral. Again, this is a very generic code, but Ford will tell you that if you pull, pull a P1700, the most common culprit of the P1700 is the fact that there's a bunch of junk, trash, or debris inside of the transmission. So we have a code that tells us there's more than likely a bunch of debris in the transmission and another code that tells us we've got a pressure control solenoid that has failed coupled with the fact that it won't go into gear won't go any faster than 10 20 30 miles an hour that tells me that i think we're looking at possibly catastrophic internal transmission failure which means we might need a new transmission so we have the physical evidence of what's happening we have the data the computer evidence of, of what's happening let's gather a little bit more physical evidence and see if we really do need a new transmission or if we can fix this by servicing the transmission replacing the pressure control solenoid and replacing the fluid i'll be right back all right so the next thing that i did was I went ahead and I drained some transmission fluid. Now, as you can see, that transmission fluid is black, dark. You can't even see through it. That's not good. So that there's another warning indicator. And what I did next was I filtered some of the transmission fluid out to another cup through a coffee filter. And this is where we go ahead and make our decision that this transmission is, is pretty much shot. It's time for a new one. 
Because if you notice, get you, get you good focus there, okay? You see all that? That is not bubbles. That's debris. That's metal shavings and debris. All of that junk on there, okay? And then I don't know if, if we can see in here. I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up. But then you take your your flashlight and you shine it in here okay and if you look you can see all kinds of metal in there let me see if I can like get you a better shot with the camera here so we'll go here all right you see all those little specks now that's showing up as I roll this like for example right right by my thumb there that's a chunk of metal that's a big chunk of metal right there And let's look here. Maybe we can see. Alright. I'm not sure if you can tell or see all the debris right there. That's not a bubble. That's a chunk of metal. Okay. So, you know, some mechanics might say, oh, hey, let's go ahead and flush the transmission. Let's go ahead and service it. And it should fix it. The only catch is, is when you have the amount of evidence that we have here, chances are that flushing the transmission, putting a new filter up there and changing the fluid is not going to fix it. Uh, basically, to keep it simple, the metal that we see in the fluid, obviously there are big chunks, but at the same time, there's also metal that was small enough to make it through the filter, yet there's so much of it even though it's basically microscopic, uh, you can still see it in the form of little sparklies and stuff in there. So, control solenoid failure code, generic transmission failure code, metal in the transmission fluid, quite a bit of it, and transmission fluid that is this dark, I say we go ahead and call it a new transmission. Now here's the catch. The other thing you gotta factor in when you're doing diagnosis like this is, uh, is the vehicle worth putting a new transmission in? The vehicle has 200,000 miles on it. The engine does run good, but with such high mileage, it's possible you put a, a, a good used transmission in it, and then next thing you know, three, four months later, because you have a 200,000 mile engine, you're starting to have major engine problems just because that's the way the cookie crumbles. So anyways so we'll see what happens i'll keep you up to date on this one i want to thank everybody for coming out and supporting me and watching my channel all that other good stuff uh as you now know i've got t-shirts that i'm selling and i'm working on coming up with like really cool slogans and uh getting other merchandise out there for uh for you guys but if you can and you want to uh, show some support, maybe buy a t-shirt. Right now, I think they make great work shirts. So, other than that, guys, I greatly appreciate you. This is Matthew, your friendly neighborhood technician, signing off.